has been answered with the front seat identifying the enemy through the day TV and FLIR cameras. Out to your front, the crew begins the attack run to deliver a Hellfire gui laser guided missile. Good ship, rifle. Hellfire, Hellfire, go. Identified further enemy elements and repositioned the aircraft in order to bring the 70mm rockets to bear on the target. Good ship, cleared halt, tipping in rockets. Rockets, rockets. Good ship, rifle. On recovery from the diving fire profile, delivering a successful rocket strike, Jim Ray acts dynamically to avoid any ground fire. Here conducting a 270 degree wing over. With a further enemy vehicle sighted, the pilot uses a 180 degree return to target wing over to rapidly reset back towards the plane. Minimizes the threat of ground fire, but making tracking and predicting the aircraft's flight difficult for an enemy attempting to engage. The bot sees the aircraft pitch from 90 degrees nose up to 90 degrees nose down at the highest point of the maneuver. successful strikes and with enemy vehicles burning, the pilot positions the aircraft in a high wheel, circling the target to allow the front seater to conduct a comprehensive battle damage assessment. While Staff Sergeant Balker scans with the cameras, Jim spots a remaining enemy soldier with a surface-to-air missile preparing to engage the aircraft. Using the targeting symbology projected into his right eye through his helmet's monocle, Jim slaves the 30mm gun to his line of sight and can quickly engage the threat decisively ending the contact. Target pilot, helmet sight, steady mic, mic firing. <laughs> Mayhem 5-1, this is gunship. Engaged with missiles, rockets and gun, all targets destroyed. Mayhem 5-1, copies all targets destroyed. Enemy fire has ceased with no friendly casualties. Many thanks, end of mission. With the threat eliminated and the friendly ground forces safe, Gunship has demonstrated the value of Apache close air support and the lethality of its precision strike weaponry, whilst also acting as a deterrent for future enemy action. Concluding the tactical demonstration, Jim will now fly a short routine to display the Apache's impressive range of manoeuvrability. is a tactical return to target maneuver commonly flown to quickly reposition the Apache back towards a threat. 
approaching 120 knots or approximately 140 miles an hour, Jim can convert this energy and momentum into a 70 degree nose up climb. Once climbing, the aircraft is rolled to 90 degrees angle of bank and our cyclic is applied to bring the aircraft through 180 degrees. Pedal is used to line the tail, ensuring it follows, in, follows the nose. The exit is flown to recovery onto entry parameters. Cameras at the ready, ladies and gentlemen, as the aircraft returns to crowd centre for a close-up look at the 360-degree wing over. The aircraft is pitched to 60 degrees nose up and 90 degrees angle of bank. Whilst coordinating control inputs, as well as monitoring the power, the 10-ton helicopter can be flown back over its right shoulder through 360 degrees. A flaring turn can be used to wash off excess speed, allowing the arrival into a 100-foot hover to demonstrate the low airspeed handling capabilities of the aircraft. 2017 sees the Army Air Corps celebrating its 60th anniversary, and the Apache has been at the centre of core recent operational experience. The aircraft developed a fearsome reputation in Afghanistan, and it has been, and will continue to be, deployed in the maritime role, flying from Royal Navy ships at sea. The Apache Force is also currently commi committed to supporting the Air Assault Task Force, UK Special Forces, and with the aircraft's flexibility and fire, H-64E Apache Guardian will be fully integrated into the new Queen Elizabeth class carriers to continue providing a vital land and maritime strike capability. The Apache has four weapons pylons mounted on the stub wings. These stations can be fitted independently with either CLV-7 rocket launchers, full-fire missile rails or external fuel tanks for increased range and endurance. As you can see today, gunship has been configured with a mixed loadout of rockets and missiles. Each rocket launcher that you can see on the outboard pylons houses 19 70mm folding fin rockets, while the missile racks can hold up to four radar or laser-guided Hellfire missiles. These pylons will auto automatically articulate through 19 degrees to keep the weapons in firing constraints for as long as possible. Both the rockets and the missiles can engage targets out to 8 kilometers while the powerful M230 30mm cannon mounted underneath the fuselage can fire high explosive rounds out to beyond 4km with a cyclic rate of 625 rounds a minute. As you watch gunship perform sideways laterals, you can see the Apache's impressive hover performance and a representative operational weight. Above the main rotor disc, you'll notice the distinctive shape of the aircraft's fire control radar. The radar is able to scan out to 8km, detecting over 1,000 targets, prioritizing them and offering the pilot 16 simultaneous firing solutions through the aircraft's weapons processors. Along with target detection and missile guidance, the radar is also capable of mapping the terrain ahead of the aircraft in flight to assist in navigation and terrain avoidance at night or in bad weather. On the nose of the aircraft is the target acquisition and designation site, or TADS, housing the day TV and infrared cameras, as well as a class 4 laser for ranging and missile guidance. A further infrared sensor mounted above the TADS can be slaved to the pilot's helmet position, allowing flight at night in pitch black solely with reference to the image Primus party tricks. The Army Air Corps continues to actively recruit both officer and senior non-commissioned aircrew, making the Army the only service that offers a flying career to both soldier and officer pilots. If you'd like more information on the Army Air Corps, please do visit us at our static display aircraft, where we'll be happy to answer any of your questions. Completing the 180 degree return to target manoeuvre to your front, Jim will now approach head on for another look at the 360 degree wing over. This will demonstrate the awesome power of the two turbo mecha engines mounted either side of the fuselage. Each engine provides over 2,300 shaft horsepower, meaning together they produce more power than four Formula One racing cars. The Apache is capable of flying on just a single engine should it sustain any battle damage. As the crew reset for the signature finale of the Apache display, we'd like to ask you just to put your hands together and thank our partners at Event Horizon for providing today's fantastic pyrotechnic effect. If you are out capturing photographs today, ladies and gentlemen, this may be one that you would like, so please do have your cameras at the ready for a final opportunity. Ladies and gentlemen, the British Army Apache Attack Helicopter. So that concludes today's demonstration of the Army Air Corps Apache Helicopter. So on behalf of the whole team, 
Major Trey Hearn, Staff Sergeant Balker and Gunship will now perform the customary bow to thank you for your support. So please do give them a wave, put your hands together and show your appreciation for their efforts today. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2017 Attack Helicopter Display Team. To finish, I'd just like to remind you that you can visit us on social media for more team news and information on upcoming displays. Feel free to share your pictures of the day using hashtag AHDT. It's always appreciated by the team and indeed other followers of the pages. You can find us by searching Facebook and Instagram with Attack Helicopter Display Team or on Twitter at AHDT. If you'd like to meet to the, today's display pilots, they will be available as they land at the Apache Static Display. On behalf of the Attack Helicopter Display Team, I'd like to wish you an enjoyable rest of your weekend and as ever, thank you for your ongoing support to the British Armed Forces. Thank you very much, Dave, and to the whole team. And it's been quite a big week for the Army Air Corps, hasn't it, uh, Dave? Because there was some ceremonial activity around the uh, 60th anniversary of the Prince of Wales. Yeah, that's correct.